everybody missing, he's leaving. It's business. Right, for sure. If it's good business, we're going to do what? Business. For sure. We're not leaving each other. It's just not on contract. Okay. So you... you, you Calvin Ford has finally broken his silence on his split with Gervonta Davis, claiming he doesn't need the Baltimore champion as well. We heard about one of Tank's most scary decisions in his entire career recently, after he ended his contract with Calvin Ford. Jim, we from Baltimore, man. In any situation, we, we, we stand 10 toes down. The grind don't stop. <laughs> For every Tank fight, a new update seems to happen in his camp. A few days after his previous fight, Leonard Ellerby got fired from Mayweather Promotions. And now, Coach Calvin Ford, who has been with Tank since his career began over a decade ago, would be leaving Tank's corner permanently. The feud that broke out between Tank and Calvin Ford that eventually led to their split has Floyd Mayweather at the center. For him to have that flexibility. It's good because Canelo do it. Ron Garcia, I mean, not Ron, uh, uh, Garcia did it. Um, it's, it's been you wonder why Calvin Ford recently released a video to criticize Floyd? It was to avoid this moment, which eventually happened anyways. Shockingly, Gervonta Davis has moved on to become a fighter in the stable of Derek James, the trainer, who currently trains his two most recent victims. Tank pop up. Said, Man, y'all could at least told me. Yo, you don't need to be worried about shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Just call Floyd. And that was his way of yes. Derek James wasn't in Ryan Garcia's corner when he got his first and only defeat against Gervonta Davis last year. Instead, he was hired by Garcia shortly before his December fight against Oscar Duarte. Also, he was in Garcia's corner during his big fight against Devin Haney, as well as in Frank Martin's corner when he lost tragically in the eighth round by knockout from Gervonta Davis. There were so many controversies between the pair, and Gervonta Davis was assured he wouldn't want to carry such animosity into the ring. Calvin Ford, who isn't known to be training any other fighter aside from Gervonta Davis, also sounded disinterested in the whole thing. And that was his way of just making Tank talk to him. That was a mentor at lessons right there to get him to talk to him. He was known to have said, I don't need this mess too. You dumb idiot, I'd get out of here. After the feud led to Tank Davis telling him he wasn't needed anymore, their dispute began silently some months ago after Calvin Ford was forced to discuss the conflict between Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta Davis while he graced a virtual interview with Fight Hub TV claiming Floyd Mayweather should be happy to sail with Gervonta Davis as he cruised to his 30th career victory in 30 fights. According to Gervonta Davis, Calvin Ford sounded too diplomatic and he didn't speak like he was on Gervonta Davis's side. Boy, ooh. He's gonna be all right, man. Another thing I wanna touch on is the Floyd situation, you know. Floyd is Floyd. That's like I say, tank is tank, man. But at the This was exactly what led to Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellerby split, according to Jeff Mayweather, who claimed Floyd wanted Leonard to pick sides. Hence, his refusal to do that and his choice to hang around Tank and promote his June 15th fight against Frank Martin was what infuriated Floyd. In Ford's case, during the interview where he was asked about the conflict, he said, Like I say, Tank is Tank, but at the end of the day, you know the man is chasing greatness. You should be supporting greatness. I always tell you that you should be supporting that. At the end of the day, you know, the man is chasing greatness. And you should be supporting that. I always tell you that. You should be supporting that, you know. He also claimed it was this kind of situation that revealed the true color of people. And this was the case with Floyd Mayweather. He said, It's a rocky road where we see what's going on. Just pay attention. The story is going to reveal itself. But again, that's how a lot of people are. Somebody said that's the true colors of a person coming out, man. You know, it's a rocky road that we see what's going on. Just pay attention, man. The story is going to reveal itself. You know, but again, that's how you burn. They can't stand you know comfortably. I don't like using that word, man, but our Lord knows, he knows, he knows, he concluded. And these were the exact words Tank Davis used against Calvin Ford. And in order to pick sides and rectify it, Calvin Ford released a video here he outright spoke against Floyd. Apparently that was too late, as Tank had made up his mind already. Now Davis's coaches have shared their thoughts about money. Calvin Ford revealed what went behind the scenes in a clip uploaded on his Instagram handle. The gym? Why? You want him to lose? That's the question. Do you want him to lose? <laughs>
Now, as Davis continues to shine in the ring, his coaches are speaking out about Mayweather's actions and raising concerns over his decision to reportedly bar Davis from his training facility at such a critical time. Davis's trainer Calvin Ford, along with assistant coach Kenny Ellis, recently voiced their frustrations in a video shared on Ford's Instagram. Ellis didn't hold back, questioning Mayweather's motives. If Tank is like a son to Floyd, why would you put him out of the gym? Biggest fight of his career and you ban him. Why? Did you want him to lose? That's the question. Do you want him to lose? The tone was unmistakably frustrated as the coaches painted a picture of betrayal. Sometimes people do things without thinking. You know, it's like the situation that we supposedly got put out the gym. We kept it quiet from Tank. Ford echoed similar concerns describing the emotional complexity of the relationship. He recounted a conversation with Mayweather where the boxing legend denied having blocked Davis from using the gym. However, both coaches remained adamant that Mayweather needed to be held accountable. Ellis went as far as to challenge the media to ask Mayweather directly about his motives. I would love for the media to ask him, what was on your mind when you put Tank out of the gym? Despite the tension, Ford also saw a silver lining. We were shopping, hanging out, having fun. I got a phone call. No, I called. Reflecting on the incident, he noted, it was a lesson within a lesson. What felt negative was actually positive. Tank worked harder and the results showed. That hard work paid off when Davis knocked out Ryan Garcia in the seventh round, securing his status as one of the sport's elite fighters. He shed light on Mayweather Jr. and Davis's emotional situation, and he called it a different type of beast. He continued, that dad coaching stuff, you get what I'm saying? It's emotions in it. You know, that situation, boy, it's heavy, you know? Asked the question, he said, oh, hell no, that didn't happen. You know, so I let it go, because I'm thinking somebody playing the game until we got back here, and then when we got back here, they said they couldn't let it to the gym. What? Okay. Only Floyd could answer that question. I would love for the media to ask him, you know, what was on your mind when you put Tank out of the Both the coaches put the accountability on Mayweather, and Ellis even said, I would love for the media to ask him, what was on your mind when you put Tank out of the gym? We are from Baltimore, man. Any situation, we stay 10 toes down. The grind doesn't stop. Since the beginning, he has had the same trainer beside him. However, the duo's meteoric rise has a backstory. Tank Davis grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and it is from this place that the world has received a fighter and a world champion. He started boxing at the Upton Boxing Center when he was a kid. He was training under Quadir Gurley, Gervonta Davis's current coach's son at the time. Thus began the quest of a young boxer. As per Los Angeles Times, when Davis's childhood coach was moving to New Jersey, he asked his father, Calvin Ford, to train young Gervonta Davis. He said, I need you to stay with Shorty Davis because you'll be a good role model for him. Ever since then, he has been glued to my side, said Ford. Calvin Ford has a tumultuous past of his own. He was once involved in drug dealing before becoming a boxing coach. Surprisingly, Ford was the inspiration for a character dubbed Dennis's Cuddy Wise from the acclaimed HBO series The Wire. A world champion was being made while The Wire was being shot. Today, we know that world champion by the name of Gervonta Tank Davis. Ford has seen Davis rise from his childhood. The trainer has a lot of faith in his protege. He says the world will tell stories about Davis in the years to come. Now you hear stories about Mike Tyson and a few fighters come every 10 years. I truly believe he, Tank Davis, is one of them fighters. Talking about Calvin Ford, Leonard Ellerby once said, Roger never got trainer of the year when Floyd was fighter of the year. His dad never got trainer of the year. So, you know, I've been openly expressing that. And I think, and I think it's time Calvin gets this adjusted. Roger never got trainer of the year when Floyd was fighter of the year. Yeah. His dad never got trainer of the year. So, you know, I've been openly expressing that. And just over the weekend, Calvin Ford trained Gervonta Davis to the 30th victory of his career. At the grand arrival where Gervonta Davis was absent, Calvin Ford made several promises to supporters of Tank Davis, and on fight night, he delivered beyond expectations and shut down all naysayers. At the grand arrival, Calvin Ford made more shocking revelations about Gervonta Davis's preparations. He claimed Gervonta Tank Davis was working hard to ensure rustiness does not affect him in the ring, as he doesn't want to underestimate his opponent in any way. 
In fact, Gervonta Davis had said he doesn't want his case to be like that of Devin Haney, who underestimated Ryan Garcia until he was dropped three times en route to the first loss of his 32-match career. So much had happened in the space of 14 months, and they didn't want this to be the reason why the more active Frank Martin would gain some edge over his opponent. Calvin, how excited is Tank and you and the entire team for Fight Week? There was a collective groan around the MGM Grand Lobby when it was announced that Gervonta Tank Davis would not actually be arriving at his own grand arrival on Tuesday. The Fight Week opener fizzled ahead of Davis's scheduled World Boxing Association lightweight title defense against Frank Martin on Saturday, and disappointed fans were left shaking their heads with Davis trainer Calvin Ford left to carry the can and break the news. I want to apologize to the fans, Ford said, killing the buzz that had built since the scheduled arrival started some 90 minutes earlier. Well, we back in business, y'all. You know, we've been waiting for this for a while. It's been a while since we've been in the ring. So we just want to come out and put on a great performance for the fans. It's all about the fans at the end of the day. He can't make it at this moment because he's been delayed, but he's going to make it up to y'all on fight night. Trust what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all want to see this performance that he's going to put on to the fans. Davis had earlier taken to X to write, The promotion for this fight was nonsense. Now watch I don't six show up to the arrivals stuff today. Well, we hear in prize fighting especially that it's about momentum. And when it comes to Gervonta Davis, I don't think you can have more momentum than coming into this matchup. Because Fans had been asked repeatedly by roving reporter Kinsey Walansky during the previous hour and a half who they were on hand to see. And while some had come to catch a glimpse of David Benavidez ahead of his fight with Alexander Gvozdik, the majority had come for Davis, and tank fever swept through the lobby. We're back in business, we've been waiting for this for a while. Ford said of Davis's first fight back after 14 months. Because of what he was able to do, especially during last year's super fight against Ryan Garcia. Since that last performance, not given us specifics, but how much has Tank improved? We want to put on a great performance. We want to put on a great performance for the fans at the end of the day. Watching him in camp, it scares me because of the things he's doing and his maturity when he gets in that ring. I've seen him listen to a conversation, listen to what's going on, and he's really focused. All right, well, I know he's very focused, but you have an update on Javante Davis in regards to his status for today. I want to apologize to the fans that he can't make it at this moment because he's been delayed. Asked about the threat posed by Detroit's Martin, Ford said, It's serious because it's a different type of fight. You can't sleep on Frank. Frank is coming to put on that party. He showed it at the press conference. He showed it throughout the whole ordeal for being a young guy that's coming on the scene at this level right here. I want people to leave, watch TV, and leave the arena saying that's one of the classiest fights we've seen since the old days. Well, y'all know we in camp, we training and whatnot, right? And I've been like, how would I say, pushing the, pushing the button, you know what I'm saying? Because you know we've been gone for so long and whatnot, you know? And they talk about... However, Calvin Ford also highlighted the fact that Gervonta Davis is doing everything to fight rustiness. He's been great as expected in training, however, that's still a huge factor when compared to the more active Frank Martin. And on fight night, despite starting slow, he pulled off one of his best performances that led him to an eighth round knockout win over Frank Martin. Shockingly, Gervonta Davis has moved on to Derek James who himself isn't free from the usual coach versus fighter dispute we see every now and then in boxing. Following the match where Spence was dropped three times before getting stopped in round nine, James was criticized for not doing enough in the corner as Crawford became the first undisputed welterweight champion of the four belt era. James was working with Anthony Joshua and Ryan Garcia, indicating he could not give Spence his full attention and the rematch with Crawford never happened as James and Spence went their way. Now it appears the disharmony has continued as the trainer filed a lawsuit on April 17th in Dallas County, Texas, demanding damages of at least $5 million. Derek James is uh, of Spence's career. He made Ryan 10 times worse. It felt like he was trying to be something he wasn't. The lawsuit alleged James found Spence's breach of contract, fraudulent business practices, and misrepresentations after Spence received the $25 million guaranteed fight purse for the Crawford fight. It is alleged James was only paid $350,000. However, James's camp stated he was entitled to 10% of the total revenue from the fight purse and PPV money. Cody, you don't want to pay him some money. That's fucked up. It's all business, but still, at the end of the day, some fucked shit up. How I pay him more, 
on a Friday. Spence stated there was a conversation between him and James. It happened on February 13th, claiming he told James he was not entitled to receive 10% of his guaranteed purse. Spence asserted someone named Al told him that paying James $350K for the Crawford fight in exchange for his training services was generous. James's attorney stated, no one named Al was present when James and Spence originally entered into their agreement. Any alleged reliance by Spence on advice from someone named Al regarding James's compensation is misplaced. The lawsuit stated Spence told James in a February 15th phone call that he did rob James. He also allegedly said in a text message that he wanted to own up to his own up and pay James the remaining $2.15 million that they kept with their verbal agreement. Well, the money never came as both sides are now in court. Still, at the end of the day, some fuck shit up. How I pay him more on a fight. Spence has yet to comment on this publicly and this exactly was what didn't go down well with Spence's former stablemate, Ryan Garcia. Despite being stablemates under trainer Derek James before Spence fought Terence Crawford, Garcia has shown zero loyalty since a split. Spence has moved on to a new coach, though it's yet to be formally announced, leaving James to focus on Garcia's battle with Haney before Garcia's win. But I made less. The fuck? Come on, motherfucker. Fuck him. Well, that's, and he been with you, you your whole career. Okay. However, Garcia gave Spence a dose of his newfound truism by claiming the truth went into the Crawford pay-per-view on a substance he didn't name. You folded. You didn't want to pay him some money, he told Spence on a social media space. It's all business. But still, I paid him more for a fight I made less than Errol against Crawford, and he's been with you his whole career. Truly, in one of Derek James's previous interviews, he had hinted at a retirement once the current set of his fighters retire. However, it's undeniable that he has been linked away from his fighters several times. Started kind of shifting for you? Just I, I got to chilling too much on the ropes, you know. Uh, Derek, that's one thing he's been talking to me about in uh, training camp for a while, you know, not getting comfortable on the ropes, you know, not chilling on them. You know. In fact, before Anthony Joshua's fight against Francis Ngannou, many rumors were made regarding Joshua's split with Derek James. However, it was first clarified immediately after the fight while Joshua spoke during his in-ring interview. Joshua, savoring his moment of victory after the match and acknowledging all the praises for his devastating right-hand punch at Ngannou, responded, it is what it is. Joshua, unlike Fury, spoke so calmly and looked to have no bad words for Ngannou, but rather motivated him to stay in the game and keep fighting. So against you, he can't compete? No. What I was saying is, on the route to the championship, you should always stay focused. And on the route to the championship, you should always stay focused, and this was me stepping aside from that. I always thought it was something for the broadcasters and sponsors to kind of get behind because it was just entertainment. But when I saw the fight with him and Tyson Fury, I was like, damn, this guy can fight. So I said I need a piece of that. He's an inspiration. And this was me stepping aside from that mission. I thought it was something for the broadcasters and sponsors to kind of get behind because it's just about entertainment. This doesn't take away anything from his capabilities because in boxing, it's one or the other. He can come again. I told him he shouldn't leave boxing. Remember, he's two fights in and best. He can go a long way if he stays dedicated. Joshua wasn't ungrateful. He then went on to appreciate his team members. I appreciate them highly. Derek James, Rob McCracken, Angel Fernandez, Jay Clinton, Robert Garcia, Virgil Hunter, all these guys have helped me till this day. I know who's there and I appreciate them highly. Derek James, Rob McCracken, Angel Fernandez, Joby Clayton, Robert Garcia, Virgil Hunter, all these. With the mention of Derek James's name, it became clear to doubters that there was actually no split. Eventually, Anthony Joshua clarified it in an interview where he claimed he trained with Ben Davison because he was in the United Kingdom. And that meant he didn't have to travel to America to hold his training camp. And that's all for now. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.